Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate a power spectral density, both with our NDAC open source Python library, as well as showing kind of what's happening under the hood in a generic power spectral density. And then I'll conclude with uh, how to calculate a power spectral density on a, another real world uh, test data set. So this is part of a four part series. So please subscribe to check out the other videos on FFTs, comparing them and, and analyzing uh, recordings that have varying frequency content. Again, this is using our open source library, which you can download for free. You can do pip install NDAC, um, installing a development branch. So there's more features in it, uh, but it's open and I encourage you to do that. So I started by generating three signals. One is noise content from 10 to 50 Hertz. It's hard to see in the time domain. The other is uh, adding two sine dwells or sine tones on top of each other, one at 30 Hertz and one at 80.25. Again, it's hard to see in the time domain. And then I added the, the, two, the sine dwells onto the random. And again, engineers typically, the first thing they do when they get data is plot it in the time domain, which is good. You get some sense of what's going on but it doesn't tell you a whole heck of a lot. The next step is to do some frequency analysis, and that's where the power spectral density is really valuable, especially for data that has random uh, content, you know, content across many different frequency ranges, which is most often, you know, every uh, real world vibration application. So using our open source library, it's ndac.calc.psd.welch. So there's a variety of different functions in, in calc.psd. Welch's is the primary way to calculate the PSD. We're passing in here the data frame, the, the, the data that has uh, the acceleration data indexed by time. And then we're specifying a bin width of one hertz. And the output now is a data frame with an index of zero, one hertz of you know, frequency content, and then the values for each signal. And now I can plot it. And you see here the noise is nice. We have a kind of flat line here from 10 to 50 hertz uh, with the sine dwell. We see peaks at 30 hertz and 80 hertz. It's not exactly at 80.25 because I'm specifying my bin width to be at 80, you know, at, at, and then at 81 and at uh, 79. So the other reason, the other element here is that it's a slightly lower peak because it's kind of leaked in the, into other. Uh, other bins. It's not exactly centered on my bin width, but really good. The other problem here with the PSD though, I'm seeing when I'm looking at a sign dwell or a sign tone is my uh, value here. G squared per Hertz isn't as intuitive maybe as you're used to. Uh, it's a density and we'll get into that more in the X in the comparison video, but something to call out. And then the sign on random, you, you see the flat line and then the, the peaks on top of that. So here, I did a little bit of, of uh, going through all of the different time ranges and three different freak and three different uh, bin widths to show you how the PSD looks for you know varying time ranges and bin widths and varying signals. And focusing here on the random data, that's this column here. What you can tell is the the values are all about 0 0.02, 0 0.03 g squared per hertz. Regardless of my bin width, you know, as my bin width gets wider, it's uh, if I just focus on the the ten the, the full time range, as my bin width gets wider, this becomes more averaged, and we'll see that as we explain how a PSD is calculated. But even when I do the short recordings, you know, maybe this recording, it's a little noisy here, especially, but you can tell it's about the same value, and that's really the power of the power spectral density is the outputs, the, the values that come out of it are independent of bin width and time duration, which allows you to compare recordings to one another, uh, allows you, that's why it's used for quantifying vibration signals and used by test standards. So that's really good. Now, if I look at the sign dwells, you'll notice that as my bin width gets wider, so it goes 0 0.5 Hertz to one Hertz to two Hertz, my value, uh, goes down and that's because the dense, you know, it's a density. So as my, my area, if you will, is getting wider, wider frequency range, there's less frequency content spread across that whole frequency range, this wider range. But as I narrow in exactly on that sign dwell, the, you know, it's that has a higher density of energy. Uh, so, you know, big takeaway is it's really, really, really good for random content. 
It can sometimes mask though uh, sign dwells. And so we have to be a little careful, but uh, it's really, really good for random content. So how is the power spectral density calculated? Well, there's a couple steps. The first thing that happens is the time duration is segmented. And typically there's overlapping segments and I'll show you that in a second. There's window functions that are applied to that. Then you cap then and a Fourier transform is calculated on all, each of these segments. There's the, the output is squared and normalized to the frequency bin width uh, so that that length of the segment now no longer matters. And then you average them all together. So let me show that in action. Here's my 10 seconds. Uh, and I'm, I've changed my, I specified all these 19 different segments because they're all overlapping by 50%. So here's my zero to, uh, to two seconds, my 1.5 to, sorry, yeah, zero to 1.5 to two, 1.5 seconds. No, sorry, 0 0.5 to 1.5 seconds, 1.5 to 2.5 seconds, uh, 2.5 to 3.5. But then you notice, again, there's another segment that spans the two, so they always overlap. You'll notice that each of these have this kind of, uh, they taper up and down. It's, it's because we applied a handing window, and the handing window is really helpful uh, in terms of um, not allowing frequency content to, to leak, uh, basically, into other frequency ranges. So that's the first two steps segmenting the file, uh, having overlapping segments. So you get more, more chances, more segments to kind of calculate the Fourier transform on and then applying the handing window. Then you compute an FFT a Fourier transform for each one of these segments. I plot it here as a waterfall plot, again, using our open source library, which is waterfall plots are normally used uh, when you have varying frequency content. And we'll see that in another video. But you can tell here, you know, they're all about the same and I'll show you a different plot. But these, this is kind of the fundamental uh, element of the PSD, though, is there's all these segments and FFTs per segment. And then we can plot all these segments together here now just in this axis and the power spectral density then averages them all together. And so you, the result is this nice clean one even though at each individual segment's really rather noisy and, and messy, when it's averaged all together, you get a really nice result. There's another way to calculate this using a couple of functions in our library, rolling power spectral densities to explicitly segment uh, different, different times, as well as uh, to see how things change over time. We'll get through that in another video, but I wanted to include that here. And you get the same result. And you can plot that as in animation over time. Um, but the point is, you know, every segment may be a little different, average together, really nice, clean result. And that's how you calculate a power spectral density. Uh, let me demonstrate that same thing now with some real world data. So I'm pulling in some data from a, a train passing over a bridge that was one of our guess the vibe segments. Here's the acceleration data. You see there's timestamps and then the three channels of acceleration data. There's a lot of data in here. I was sampling pretty fast. So there's over 1 million samples in this, you know, 10 second recording or a couple second recording. And here's as the bridge passes by overhead. If I zoom in here, um, it's, you know, I'm going to actually explicitly define, I only want to look at the time uh, 2112 to 21. 16, so just when the train's actually passing overhead. I'm going to plot the time domain just for a, a tenth of a second here so you could see it. A lot of different content here. And again, this is representative of real world data. It tends to span across a lot of different frequency ranges. So let's see that in the power spectral density. Again, calculating power spectral density is super easy. Just pass in the time uh, data and I specify the bin width. I like doing a bin width of one hertz, but it's up to you. And then here's my power spectral density, and here I can plot it. And so looking at this, uh, I'm going to maybe focus on the Y. I know there's some peak frequency around 23 hertz. Maybe that's a fundamental mode of the bridge. Not quite sure. Maybe it's the, the, the could also be the wheels, the rate at which the wheels are turning on the, the tracks of the train. And then there's a lot of other frequency content. Some of these are resonances, you know, some of it's just random. Um, but you get all that in the power spectral density. 
What may be problematic though is there's still a lot here. You know, this is still plotting over 10 kilohertz. So there's 10,000 points. If you want to put this into a simulation, uh, it's a little cumbersome. And because power spectral densities are densities, I can get wider ranges. And you could just do that in a linear scale, like by specifying a bin width of not one hertz, but maybe 20 hertz or a bin width of 80 hertz, which would be pretty extreme. Or <clears throat> you can convert to an octave spaced uh, <coughs> range, which is typically what's done, especially because you plot power spectral densities in a log scale also. So it'll be evenly spaced in, in, in logarithmic space. So we have another function here where you give the PSD two octave. The input is the linear space power spectral density. <clears throat> and then you specify your starting frequency and how many bins per octave you want. And so I went really coarse, which is one bin per octave. So every frequency is two times the last frequency. Most often people will use three bins per octave, six, maybe 12, um, but you can play with that. And now I plot that and you have a nice more uh, kind of more representative uh, or more summarized characterization of the vibration environment as the train went by. And this would be really easy to provide to a colleague or provide to a simulation to then simulate <clears throat> that bridge uh, moving as the train went by. And that is how you calculate a power spectral density, again, using our open source library, but also you now hopefully know the fundamental kind of steps that go into calculating power spectral density. Again, please subscribe to our videos and you'll see some other videos showing um, how to anal analyze vibration data in the frequency domain. Thanks.